So in the last episode of this series, things got a little bit crazy. We went through the draft. We didn't quite fire sale the team, but we got you know rid of a lot of familiar names and faces while almost uh, drafting an entire round's worth of players. It felt like a lot happened. But still, despite getting rid of some you know longtime members of this roster, that's not to say that this team won't be in a competitive place in the upcoming season. We're going to get right down to business here. Uh, before the re-sign phase, I want to send out a couple of offers. Matt Shogard will be the first one that we send an offer out to. Again, when it comes to re-signing players, I have to try and get them uh, to sign for the whole 85% trick. And of course, if they do not want to sign, they are gone. So Christian Milanen will, re will yet again... Uh, be leaving this team. We'll probably drop better Gurdiv. He is no longer forever. Forward wise, Drake Batherson wants a one year deal, and anything beyond that is 115. I could totally go for a. Oh, God, wow, I had his name and it just completely lost me. The dude on Nashville who signed there for like seven years, Colton Sissons. Sissons? Yeah, it was Sissons. Uh, who signed there for way, way longer than I think anybody. Uh, thought that he would. He got like a, what, a six, seven year deal? <laughs> it's pretty ridiculous. Um, I mean, this is the time to save some money here for Batherson. So it's, it's interesting, but I think I'm going to try to go four years for Drake. I can see him being the leader of that bottom six for the remainder of this series. He'd have to accept a $1 million deal for the next four years, but Drake Batherson has been a, you know, a soldier for us. So I really want to keep him. Rudolph Balser's is incredibly interesting because he was fantastic when he played this past season. Uh, wasn't called upon much, Grant didn't do much in the playoffs, only took three shots. But, you know, I think I think we bring back Balsers as a potential depth option. He wants a dirt cheap contract, there's no reason to not bring him back. Uh, Martin Furk, same thing, he could boost up the AHL, but I'm going to let Furk go. And we'll give him a chance to be, you know, potentially a fourth liner for a different organization. As Gruden, there's no reason to not make this a three-year deal. I mean, granted, we could go one year and hopefully he stays as an RFA. You know, I mean, depending on how well he improves this offseason. Let's try to get uh, Gruden under the three-year deal because if he ends up being a staple member of the fourth line, he's someone worth keeping. Uh, you have Max Zimmer as well, who was very good in the AHL, but it's the same thing. Uh, where we're just going to let him go. I think he's an elite AHL, but not really an NHLer. Uh, same for Matt Philippe, although Philippe as a grinder could work, but we're going to let him go. Otto Koivula, the difference, of course, between he and everyone else is that he's a year younger. There might still be some development on the table for him, so we'll sign him up. And then that pretty much does it for those initial offers. We'll see what happens from there. So we'll advance to the actual start of the re-sign phase as our head coach's contract is up, or at least our interim head coach's contract is up. Koivula re-signs. Balsers, Batherson, Gruden, and Shogard all return to this organization. So the big question is going to be what's going to happen with the coach. As we look here, if we sign Bouchard, that is our sixth goaltender. Interesting. Because he's a, only a 64 at 20 years old. Hmm. That's a tough one. Because what if there's somebody half decent on the market? But I can't help but think goaltending wise, it's going to be Wallstead, Persvetov, and Shogard battling it out, probably with Dopita and Bednart, and then maybe Bouchard there as well. I think we'll hold on to Bouchard. Uh, you know, the, the whole 85% trick might not work with. Uh, with the ELCs, and really, I don't even think it matters that much. It's mainly with the big time contracts, but we'll see if we can get Bouchard to sign. Defensively, I mean, we pretty much know we're going to be signing Datsuk. I mean, we drafted him with the sole purpose of having him play. So that is the intention. Christian Wolanin will be dropped. We're also going to sign Goliath, and he'll play either in the AHL or the NHL. Fedor Gradiv, has talked about, will be dropped. Sloan, man, being a 75 at 17, we're going to sign him to his ELC as well. I don't think he'll end up playing, but uh, point remains. And then the rest of these guys are some real lower overalls. Uh, let's take a look at all the forwards in general. Brady Kachuk's deal is up. A lot of deals are up at the end of next year. 
Uh, so again, Zimmer and Ferk, we're going to go ahead and drop them. Philippe will sign Rensfeld to his ELC. He'll be in the AHL at the very least. Kaheznikov will be assigned as well. Anybody else? I'm going to sign Flaherty too. I mean, with the exempt contracts, you know, these guys, if they can play in the AHL, there's really no reason to not have them in the AHL at this point. Uh, even Camper and Antropov, this is why I'm letting go of players like Ferk. Uh, because someone like Antropov really could use that AHL spot. We're going to sign Brenberg as well. And Atonovich. Pretty much anyone over a 65, I think, is useful. Uh, Kane is horrible. Dennis Kane, fifth round pick in 2022. He's just not going to make it, so we're going to go ahead and release him. And Tucker... Hayden Tucker was a fifth-round pick in 2023. Uh, doesn't need to be signed, thankfully. I looked at the wrong, uh, wrong guy. It was Peyton Neal, who was a second-round pick. Uh, we will sign him for the hell of it. We'll sign him. He's a year younger than Tucker, so that helps a little bit. And I think that's all we got to worry about. Of course, we ended up drafting so many damn players. It's unbelievable. So let's see how this goes, the initial responses. Rensfeld signs. I didn't do the ELCs, you know, the 85% trick for all the ELCs. I think you've got to tell. I just said, yeah, fuck that. It's like Bouchard rejects because he's like, come on, man, just pay me. So everybody else, though, has signed as intended. So we'll give Bouchard the money uh, that he's looking for. You know, I get the point in saying, like, ah, Eugene would save money. But at this point, for two ways, like, yeah, who gives a, who gives a damn? <laughs> It's really the big money deals, of course, that that rule applies to. The ELCs don't really factor into how much money a, uh, you know, virtual Eugene Melnick would be spending. So here's the decision that has to be made. The first real big decision, of course, beyond uh, that move there, right? Beyond the, the re-signings, is what do we do with Boyce? Gets us to a conference final. Could potentially be better than anybody else out there. <sighs> I honestly think we drop him and we see what else is out there because if there's a head coach that's an A+, we have to go for it. We have to. And the thing is, when signing staff members, I'm limited to what I can do in this series, so it's not a matter of just maxing out the offer so we don't sit here for six years. We're going to let him go, and I'm going to handle the coaching staff First and foremost, because that is the most important thing for us in this offseason. Of course, I'll have to handle scouting as well. So the big question here, who is the top head coach available right now? Because as mentioned, I have to sign them uh, to within their role, essentially. Now, initially, the, the word was, uh, do I sign them to within their role or can I like sign a dude here? And make him my head coach. But I decided to just do it from within the tabs. It's the same thing for the scouts. So Scoville is there. But obviously we're not going to bring Landon Scoville back. After how his tenure here ended. So the question is. Do we go for Brendan Para Or Kip Bulbrook. And neither appear to be great fits. Para is okay. But not amazing. And then you look at Scoville at a 59. So Sam Biggs at a 62, Taylor Hall would be the uh, real hurt member of the, the core here. But a 62 from Biggs is the best one. A 62 from Ben Goldman. Also there, a 61 from Boyce, who we just got rid of. Not that he was fired. I mean, I can bring him back. We just elected to see what else was out there. Uh, Batherson isn't a great fit, but that's okay. 66 for Yahir Martin. I mean, Batherson and Brandstrom are the lowest, but a 66 is pretty damn good because all we can see right now is the core of the team, right? We don't know who some of the younger guys are that are going to fit, but Martin is an A-. minus. It's weird, though. He's a forward specialist, but he's a better defensive option. I think Martin's the guy. I mean, he has the best team fit for what we have going on here. The Kings are interested. The Devils are interested. I can only offer him his asking price. We're going to throw our name into the hat for you here, Martin. I can't do anything else in terms of associate or assistant because I need to know if my head coach is a forward-based coach or not. So we hold off from there. 
Now, in terms of scouts, uh, we do have our four NHL scouts. I don't have any AHL scouts, which I feel like costs me on occasion. And to be honest, I think I probably will start to send out uh, deals for AHL scouts. So if I look here, we need a WHL scout. Uh, we need a U.S. West scout. Again, we're only allowed one. I need an extra Liga and a Swiss NLA scout. Uh, for the hell of it, I could sign an Allsvenskan scout, even though nobody shows up. I'll look at Allsvenskan ROW. Uh, and then the four AHL scouts is what we're looking at here. So I think uh, that is exactly what we're going to look for here. Of course, I can hire the scouts. So again, we go to AHL. We're just going to hire the four best. Uh, so first up will be a Peyton Bradley. Let's go for Jade Coletta. Reinhardt, Hazel Reinhardt. Is this James Neal? It might be. It is. And we'll look to bring back James Neal. Uh, let's see. Four. I mean, we need the, we need a WHL scout. Danye. Da Dagonays. Good old Dagonays. Sign him up. Uh, we need a U.S. Weast scout. Vlasic will hopefully be the one. And then for Europe, we need two options here. We need an extra league of scout. And a Swiss scout will go for Sylvian Lebe. And then we need to look at Scandinavia, which would be the Allsvenskan slash ROW. And we'll sign Ulrich Hertel, hopefully, uh, to kind of fill the role of both. So that handles the scouting department, just the team staff at, you know, at our first opportunity. Now we get to look at this free agent class, which features an RFA and Cody Glass. We'll start off with goaltending, as I normally do. Overall wise, I mean Ranta's the cream of the crop. We don't need him. Kemper has dropped his asking price from like seven million to four point six. Now, that is really not a bad price to bring in Kemper. I'd have to trade a goaltender. Prosvetov would probably lose this deal. But we could look to bring back Darcy, which would be fantastic. And I can't offer a player more than their asking price. But we could look to bring back Darcy Kemper. Now, our team cap hit is at $60 million, So we have about $19.5 million, million to spend. So bringing back Kemper could be a very good idea because I've been handling the auto-rotating myself because, again, I don't feel like it works that well this year for some reason. I didn't feel that way at the start of the year, but now I feel like auto-rotates are kind of broken. So, you know, bring him back. Kemper, who we know is solid, could be great. Uh, Braden Holpe is a real budget option, as is Semyon Varlamov. But Holpe has been garbage for this entire franchise mode series. And Semyon Varlamov, honestly, has been pretty good aside from one year. But he did spend a year in the AHL, which is surprising. Or at least split time last year in the AHL. At 36 years old, he might get worse, too. You have Flower, Bennington, Jones, Kakunin. Who do we have for prospects? Swayman is 25. Was he with the Bruins the entire time? He was. Played two games in Grand Rapids, oddly enough. Uh, he's he struggled so far at the NHL level. He's not worth four million bucks. Like I don't know why I said it bucks. There's a Y in there now, apparently. So there is a medium starter goaltender in Kozinov. And then you have Hugo Alnefeld as a high fringe. So there are some moves to make here, but it would require us sending out some of the goaltending options that we already have in hopes that we get other people. But I think that is a strategy that I'm willing to go after here. So if we look at the goaltending here, I think Ivan Prosvetov is going to be on the outs. We'll see what we can get for him. A fifth round pick from the Bruins. Fifth and a seventh from Dallas. Do I see a fourth round pick anywhere? I don't. Uh, we'll send Prosvetov to the Dallas Stars. And then the option from here, I mean, again, you have Bednard, you have Dopita, you have Shogard at 23. If we wanted to sign one of those prospect goalies, we'd have to move somebody else. 
Although, in theory now, Bouchard looks like he might be playing a junior for one more year, so we technically have two goalie spots. I think I'm going to look to bring back Darcy Kemper on a one-year deal. I don't know if he'll accept it, and if he doesn't and we lost Prosvetov, Shogard's going to be the backup this year. But I think Kemper is looking for a steal of a contract, and we're going to try to bring him back on a one-year deal. And then prospect-wise, I mean... Kozanov's the guy to get for trade value, but otherwise Hugo Alnafelt's the guy to get because he's the same overall in potential as Prosvetov was, but he's two years younger. I mean, I'm sure there's a medium fringe or two that are pretty good. And I'm sure, you know, like I said, the value for that medium starter might be nice, but he is literally just trade value. That's the only reason to sign him. I'm going to go after Hugo Alnafelt uh, because this guy's looking pretty damn good. He wants a one-way deal as well, which is very interesting. I'm just going to give him what he wants and hope that he signs. And if he doesn't, then hey, we'll go after the medium starter. Defensively, who are the top options here? We have Tony D'Angelo, Noah Hannafin, Ristolainen, a couple 84s, Caleb Jones there as well. So, you look at our defensive situation, and we know our top four is locked in, despite getting rid of Lassie Thompson. That's, you know, that's just how it's been established. We know this from the last episode. And of course, there's a chance Poirier, Datsuk, Tykonik, Goliev. Or I guess it would be Gold. Yeah. Goldyev. <clears throat> I guess it would be Goldyev. 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 What's your first name? Mikhail. Uh, and we also have Mikhail. So I really don't think we need anybody defensively aside from prospects. I really don't. There isn't anybody that I want to sign that can take away a spot from a top four. And there isn't anybody that, you know, anybody that I really want to sign that can take away a spot, in my mind, from some of the younger talent that deserve a chance to grab the brass ring. So you look here. There is this prospect. I don't like low fours, but they do have some trade value sometimes. Vyacheslav Novikov, who I am going to look to sign. I don't know how many, how many, um, you know, exempt contracts we have at this stage. I should have looked when I was there. High six, there isn't anyone worth signing. So from there, it's just a medium top six uh, defenseman. And then for forwards, I mean, the top options, Austin Matthews, who I can't sign. He's too expensive. And I'm not going to be willing to give up what it's going to take to get Glass, uh, Suzuki, or Denisenko. From there, I mean, you know, you have someone like Tom Wilson looking for five million bucks. Mikhail Backlund's an interesting one. A very interesting one, because he's looking for under four. Almost looking for only three at an 85 overall. Whereas, you know, you have Bailey and Grundstrom looking for uh, $4 million too. Kerfoot, uh, wow. Aaron, <laughs> Jared Anderson Dolan is looking for nothing. It might just be worth throwing our name into that hat and seeing if we can get him for no compensation. I mean, literally, there is no reason to not do this. It's 1275, is it not? Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> we'll just see if that's magically accepted. No plans to necessarily work him into the team, but I think we'd be pretty stupid and not make that move. So we only have five exempt contracts, so we're technically on 40 deals. So forward-wise, we have Kachuk, Hall, Kachuk, Isher, Pinto, Naslin, Pilar, Stepan, and Batherson, Borgo, like Gruden, Balsers, Koivula, Rensfeld. I mean, there's no doubt we can <clears throat> shore up this team with some veterans. No doubt about that. Let's see, three, four, five. And we do need some depth options here on defense. There's no doubt we can shore up this team with, you know, veteran presence in terms of the forwards. But is that necessarily the way I want to go? I don't know the answer to that. What I do know now is that we need a couple of good medium top sixes if they're available. Uh, there is Demore, who is only a 52, though. You have Janssen, Siernik. Hello, here we go. Kaltanen. Okay, so there we go. We actually got a couple of good options here. So, 20 at, uh, six, 6 overall, 20 years old. Then there's this, you know, this duo of 19-year-olds. And then there's Letty. Is this Charlie Letty? It is Charlie Letty. I mean, no doubt about it. We have to go after Charlie Letty. And then I think we go after the two 19-year-olds in Johansson. 
I'm intrigued to see who let him go. Robert Johansson, second round pick of the Sharks in 2022. And then there's also Antti Kultanen, second round pick of the Leafs in 2022. I think if we can get those uh, defensemen there, that'll certainly help shore things up. So then that brings us to the forwards. Now, as mentioned, I don't think there's going to be anybody I necessarily want to bring in unless it's the likes of Backland. You know, some of these veterans on cheap deals, it depends on whether or not there are prospects available. And, I mean, Dubois, you know, we'd solely pick him up for the reason to trade him. So I don't think I want to waste a spot on him. As the voice is giving out, it's giving out, I'm crying. Oh. Everything's fine, I swear. I'm only half dying. Everything's fine. We're good. Oh, God. Just, you know, you know, when you, when you talk for 20 minutes straight without just being like, I'm going to take a breath. You know, it's just, you know, the voice can just be like, hey. I t- time out here. I need a break. That's what happened. Merrick Scratchinch isn't likely to make it, but is worth signing, I would say. And then you have the likes of Morozov, Kachuk, and McTavish, who are absolutely worth throwing in offers for. I mean, well, Kachuk at 26, but... Okay. Let's send an offer out for Scratchinch. I am going to send an offer out for Morozov. Not that I necessarily have plans for him, but if I can get him to sign this deal for no reason at all, and we don't require compensation, I'll take it. It's the same thing for Mason McTavish. Uh, Problem is, I literally cannot sign him for more than what he's asking for, so I imagine Washington will be re-signing him. Uh, Some AI team should easily steal him away. So then from there... Uh, Really now, we're up to 10 contracts offered, so I have to wait and see what happens here with some of these options. So here we go. Let's see what happens a few days from now with both the staff and other options. So Jerome Vlasic's on as a scout. Let's see, Hurdle in as a scout. Come on, Bradley in as a scout. Novikov ended up signing. James Neal is back as a scout. Danier in as a scout. Seabrook is in. I don't think a single scout rejected us. As Robert Johansson has signed, Merrick Scratchinch went to the Coyotes instead. Novikov signed, though. So because of that, now I know I have one more uh, option here. So, although it says we're on 47 contracts, so we must technically be on 42, so we'd be up to 49. Yeah, so I should have one more spot. I'm actually going to wait it out. I'm going to wait it out. There might be some medium top nine forwards. There might be a veteran we can uh, scoop up here. We'll see. You hear Martin rejected. That sucks. Uh, And Coletta, apparently I didn't have room on the scouting department for, or Reinhardt. That's bizarre to me. Anderson Dolan rejected due to the low money. Charlie Letty signed. McTavish stays in Washington. Morozov rejects. Hugo Alnefeld signed. Colton signed. Okay, so we got the majority of the players that we wanted. Very few of those RFAs worked out. So in terms of the scouts, just let me check this. So we have one, two, three, four, two AHL scouts, and then WOQ, U.S. Central, U.S. West, U.S. East. Uh, one, two, three, four there. One, two. Okay, so you were going to be the Osvenskin scout. And it still says I have one too many. Two, three, four. One, two. I guess just signing... An AHL scout in general is uh, it's tough to do. Interesting. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to fire Hurdle. I do want to bring on another AHL scout. And then the one AHL scout we won't have is for the team that's within our AHL team's division, basically. Uh, so it is the Ontario Reign. So we'll look to bring in either Reinhardt or Coletta. Reinhardt has a shitload of offers. And then one of them... Uh, we'll go to one of those locations. Coaches, looking here, I need to send out another offer to you here, Martin. I have to, and just have to, you know, have to hope that he has a change of heart. The next best option, sixty-one for Boyce. Oh boy, sixty-two for Burke, and a sixty-two for Clint Bennington. 
61 for Muir, 61, 61. Keith Yandel. Uh, okay, I didn't sort by just head coaches. Uh, Lacroix. Was that a 53? Apparently. He doesn't look that bad. So, really, what I'm seeing here is if it's not going to be a here, Martin, it's, uh, oh boy. Who the hell would it be if it's not him? Bennington at a 62. As a generalist. Because some of the head coaches are off the market now. I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to wait it out to see if Martin will accept. And if he won't, we'll just have to go for the second best. Uh, Darcy Kemper is back in Ottawa. Things you love to see. It. So obviously we're going to roll with Wallstead being our number one guy. But getting Kemper back certainly solidifies that goaltending position. So that is fantastic. And then again, all the felts there. Really to be a safety net. I mean, he's too good for the AHL, but that's probably where he'll be. Uh, which means there's a really good chance we're going to trade Matt Shugard here. We'll see. Defensively now, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Perfect. We're good there. And then forward-wise now is where we need the last few spots. Um, I guess technically it's going to show us on 51 contracts. I guess technically we have four spots, which is nice. So let's see who's out there when it comes to the forwards that we can use to improve this team. And first and foremost, in terms of prospects, I mean, yeah, I don't expect Morozov or Anderson Dolan to necessarily accept. But again, if we can get these guys for dirt cheap, there is really... Oh, I guess one... Oh, that's right. The, the price goes up. It's 1275 for year one, but now that price significantly goes up. Holy hell, I didn't even factor that in. I feel dumb for not even thinking about that. Holy hell, 1-5 might be enough. When, when is the point where it costs... Okay, so yeah, 1-5 is the limit, so just under 1-5. There's a good chance we're going to steal away Jarrett Anderson Dolan and uh, potentially Morozov here as well, which there's really no reason to not do it. And then from there, I mean, you got Grunstrom, you got this Dubois guy. Interesting. I think we have to wait it out to see what happens with those two, because otherwise we're going to end up with forward overload like we've had before. And that's not exactly what we want to see here. So Reinhardt is on as our third and final AHL scout. You hear Martin rejected again. He's not going to sign. I don't think he's going to get desperate enough to sign here. He just doesn't want to be here. Uh, we can blame the Eugene effect for that. So we look at head coaches then. Again, how I wish we could bring back Landon Scoville. So it is going to be either Matthew Boyce or Clint Bennington. Maybe even Muir. So again, we had Boyce. He's a slightly less, uh, you know, level scheme fit for this team than Bennington. But he's also an A-. minus, And I think coach influence is pretty low. He actually has a losing record as a head coach. I mean, Batherson's the guy to really suffer with him. Taylor Hall is the guy to suffer with Clint Bennington. Hmm. Where did Bennington coach before? I like his I like his attributes a lot more. He was Calgary's head coach. Up until this past season, they fired him. 17, 26, and 6, but before that, two 46 win seasons. Two Jack Adams awards. I think we go for Clint Bennington. Let's see if this dude is willing to accept, and then again, if he does, we'll know what to do with the rest of our coaching staff. We're not going to know until that moment. So let's see how this goes down, particularly with those RFAs. Bennington also rejected. It's Morozov rejects. He stays in Minnesota. Anderson Dolan also got the payout there from Los Angeles, so you're welcome to those two. Uh, I really kind of helped you guys get a payday. So at this point... Uh, you know, we're kind of begging. We are going to go back to Matt Boyce and offer him the deal. We're also going to go to Muir and offer him the deal. 
And hopefully one of the two accept. If not, I'm totally screwed, and uh, like, there might not be much I can do in, uh, you know, aside from just being completely limited and having to send out some money as Anaheim sends Ricard Raquel to the Winnipeg Jets. See what happens here. Muir rejects. We need Boyce to come back. i got to look at forwards here, too. We have a couple of spots. I probably just lost out on somebody. Top forwards available at this point. So Austin Matthews signed somewhere. I mean, you're talking Kopitar, Ovechkin, Bailey. Like, there is... I mean, Evgeny Malkin's there, too. Cap it right now is 64, basically. We still have roughly $15 million to sign. I have to spend money somewhere. The problem is how many of these guys are going to be getting, you know, NHL, you know, NHL minutes. And the answer is not many of them. Not many of them at all. What is the cap floor is now the question. We might have to sign at least one of them, maybe two of them, to kind of be the healthy scratches for this team. Holy hell, we are way under the floor right now. Friggin' yikes. We are way under the floor. I have to spend money. Like I said, we're just a hair under $64 million spent. Fortunately, it's not going to tell me the cap floor here. Which kind of sucks, but hey, what are you going to do? That number really should be easier to find at times. We have to spend money. We have no choice. Uh, bringing in Darcy Kemper simply wasn't enough. So if we look here, right... I will even ponder defensemen, even though we really don't need one. I mean, you could argue, give Caleb Jones a shot, just for the hell of it. Man, Max Gilden down there is looking for a decent amount of money, too, as an RFA. You could argue, give Caleb Jones a shot, but I think for me, it's the forwards. So you have Carl Grundstrom, who's looking for the most amount of money there. I can't overpay Ovechkin, but bringing Alex Ovechkin... <laughs> To Ottawa, sounds like an interesting idea. If we look at who's looking for the most amount of money and the shortest contracts, I mean, not that I want to bury some of these guys in the minors, but I can't believe I'm saying this. I think it's just not a good fit for this team, though. Like, there's not much I can do. Like, I have to sign Ovi, but he just doesn't fit this team. Like, how is... how Okay. Let me at least look, because it might have to be Josh Bailey instead. Obviously. I love Alex Ovechkin. But is he going to fit this team? Because if we look at this forward, top six, top six, top six, top six, top six. The idea was Naslin potentially getting into the top six. You could argue he'd be good enough on the third line for one more season. You could also argue Justin Stepan, but he could also do pretty well on the third line this season. Like right here... Naslin, Batherson, Stepan sounds like an amazing third line to me. Borgo, but then there's Pilar. Oh, there are going to be some very good players. Might get sent down to the minors, and it might end up being the players that I'm about to sign because I have no choice. Like, I have no choice. I need to play the youth and not rely on someone like Ovi. So I'm looking at uh, the Patrick Hornquists of the world who won't necessarily put me into a brutal spot if I were to send them down. There's also bringing in a veteran option in 40-year-old Joe Pavelski that could work. So those will be the first two that I look at sending offers to right now because, like I said, I really do want to trust the youth and try to get some of these guys to develop. Matt Boyce is back. He was the interim coach. He hits the open market. But he is now back as the head coach of the Ottawa Senators, which means I need a defensive coach and a generalist. I don't know if DeRozier will continue to be here. So I need a defensive coach and a generalist. Or, uh, wait, is he a forward coach? No, he was a generalist, wasn't he? No, ah, it is a generalist. Okay. So, if we look here, for associate coaches, you have a couple of Bs. For assistant coaches, a couple of Cs. Fair enough. So for the Bs, we have Raymond, Burke, Edwards, and Stone. For the assistants, I'm obviously wanting to look for real-world players who might have retired. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm necessarily going to find one, unless this is like Matt Duchesne. It's Mario Duchesne. Umberger, Henderson, Mark, Shipley, Hogan, Lynch, Oda, Alos, Como. 
Yeah, I don't think we're going to find any former players that have retired and become NHL assistants. It's just not going to happen. So we can literally sign whoever uh, has like the best teaching rating, which would be this uh, this dude that doesn't help. Uh, who's next in terms of the highest grade? The two A minuses. There are the two generalists. So Corvo or Como, Emilio Corvo, the sixty-year-old, or Pierre Como. And it seems obvious to me that we uh, we need to go for Pierre Como as our new assistant coach, which means we need a defensive specialist as our new associate. Again, I think our other dude here, he was actually a, a C generalist, but I, uh, I like the other guy more. Yeah, based off of those stats, I definitely like the other guy more and the teaching stats a lot better too. So George, we'll see you later. And we now need that associate coach who is going to be a defensive specialist, so we are looking at Stone. Casey Stone, come on down. And then we look over here, and I want to see what we have for a goalie coach. There are some very good teachers. But goalie coaches, the best appears to be a D grade. We're looking at Peter Meme. Maximilian Peterman will hopefully be our new goalie coach, unless it turns out that uh, actually... Chloe, oh yeah, Chloe's not even worth getting rid of. Hmm. So I'll have to send that offer back up. Let's go ahead and wait until the coaches are set up, done and dusted. We'll take it from there. So we'll hit send the next season. Hornquist signs. Como rejected, which kind of sucks. Peterman rejected, which really sucks. Pavelski also says I have a full roster. Stone is able to sign. Um, here's, here's the deal. Here's the issue we're having right now. If I have a full roster, I am about to get destroyed in terms of reworked AI contracts because it'll auto adjust deals to make sure that we're not under the floor, right? So we have absolutely no choice but to make a trade here. We have no choice at all. So... What's it going to be? And I feel like the easiest thing I could do is trade Shogard, run all the felt with a veteran goaltender, um, or run all the felt with Tapita and Bednar, and then bring in a very expensive veteran goaltender on preferably an expiring deal. That is my game plan. I'm talking about, well, maybe not Ilya Samsonov. Can I find the modern day, like, Henrik Lundqvist, basically, is what I'm looking for. And it might be easier said than done. Yeah, Demko's making a ton from Columbus here. You have Ottinger. He's, Jesus, has a steal and a half for Dallas. Uh, Milson, wow, Detroit has two goalies on their roster right now. I mean, obviously, like, Matt Murray would be nice. I don't want to have to buy anybody out. Like, Bobrovsky would be great if I could guarantee that he'd retire at the end of this season, but playing him as a healthy... Sergei Bobrovsky might be my option here. I might actually have to bring in Bobrovsky. David Riddick might be the safer bet. He might be the safer bet in Minnesota. Yeah, I think we might go for Riddick right now. And that way, too, I can bring on another free agent signing if I just, you know, pair a forward with this deal. And we should be okay. So right now, big save Dave. Looks like our target. It's just York in there. It's weird. Wow, one goalie signed right now for St. Louis. I think we have our guy. And it is going to be one big save, David. Askroff already getting paid a ton. Yep. Let's go back this way to the Minnesota Wild, and we're going to work out a deal here for David Riddick. And hopefully... I can add on a random forward into the deal to help facilitate this. And I hate to say it, but I think it's going to be the likes of Jordy Bellarive or Mark Kastelik. I really liked Mark Kastelik on that fourth line, but it just kind of fell apart to a certain point. Yeah, we have enough younger guys that we pretty much know who it has to be. I'm going to get rid of Bellarive. I like him, but... 
I think it's time. So we will take on Riddick's contract for the year. Fourth and a fifth here to even it out. Riddick and a fifth. There it is. So the Mad Showguard era is over here. We bring on Dave Riddick. I should really only have to sign someone to get up to around 70 million to be safe and sound and over the floor. So that means if we look at the forwards here, it's Ovi, it's Kopitar, it's one or the other. And I feel like you know, I feel like you guys, you know, given the chance, the opportunity to sign Ovechkin, you guys won't forgive me if I don't. Let's send the contract offer to Alexander Ovechkin and see if he is coming to Ottawa. As absurd as that is. And then we'll sort out the staff from there. As OV signs, Alex Ovechkin has joined the Ottawa Senators. We're still not over the floor limit. It's about 74-ish from what I can tell. So um, I might have to move somebody else. But fun fact, I think Evgeny Malkin is also going to be a member of the Ottawa Senators. I don't know if these two are going to play, but I need to fill up some cap space here. Will this work? I do have a full roster. I thought that I did. I was hoping that it was just kind of you know weirded out the last time I did that, so I hate to say it, uh, but Mark Kastelik, I think you know his time is done here. And uh, we'll pair him in with, I guess, kind of the the lowest of the low, medium, uh, medium bottom six forward. And we'll see if we can send him out west to Anaheim for like a fourth rounder. Not not enough for a fourth rounder, huh? How about a fifth rounder? Hey, hey, what do you say, fifth rounder? Mark Kastelik is worth a fifth round pick. He is a solid fourth liner, sir. And or madam. There we go. Sixth rounder works. So, hate to say it, but the former Calgary Hitman member has to go at this stage as we make room uh, for younger talent, but also at the same time, older talent. As we will see if Evgeny Malkin is willing to sign with the team. And then again, we still have some coaching staff things to work out. But hopefully Gino's willing. And then uh, at the very least, I mean, I know there's a lot of people probably wondering who the hell signed where, and I definitely stemmed way too far ahead as Gino has signed. So maybe we'll uh, still find a way to take a look there. We are, like, right on the line, if not slightly under. Son of a bitch, I have to sign somebody else. <sighs> We're going to have some people in the AHL who are not happy to be buried in the AHL. <laughs> that is just a fact of life now. Uh... Can't get rid of Novikov yet. Can't get rid of man. Can't get rid of man. There's Neil, who we just signed. Atonovich. Kapanen, I can't get rid of yet because that was a Eugene pick. Uh huh. Maxence Gwinnett is uh is gonna have to be the guy. Hate to tell you, Max, but. Somebody's got it going for a fifth round pick from Anaheim, maybe not. Even just for a sixth round pick next year. Gwinnett has gone to Anaheim. We will sign one more dude to push us over the limits and then take it from there. So let me know if there was a player that you really wanted to see where they ended up. And I'll try to remember to go back and look. And uh, we are going to try and sign Justin Braun. Apparently we have some competition, so I'll send out an offer for Braun. I will also send out an offer for one Tyler Johnson. And we'll see how that works out for us in terms of these two guys pushing us over the contract limit. So we go to the coaching staff. One more time here. So we need that generalist assistant, which, guess what? It's going to be Ruchin. No reason to have it not be Ruchin. So you'll be our new NHL assistant. And now, we need... I'm just going to fire Kyle Lutton, and we need to completely redo the AHL. So I feel like that's fair to be able to promote my AHL guys because the AHL staff members are always horrible with the, the way we've been doing this to limit kind of cheesing the AI. 
so we are going to send an offer to Dean Amonti and Jackson Bembridge, and hopefully one of those two will be the next head coach of the Belleville Baby Sens. So let's move forward again. This has been a hell of an off-season video. I didn't expect it to take this much. This is the type of video that some people just simply do not like. As both of those coaches rejected, lovely, Justin Braun signed. Tyler Johnson also signed. Interesting. I didn't think I'd be able to sign both of them. Now we know for sure that we're good and that we're not going to need anybody else. So that's nice. Uh, but with that, we will go back over here. I feel like for the AHL, it really doesn't matter at this point. So is there a former NHLer? That's interesting to sign, and the answer is not really. So out of these C coaches, let's just go for you. Mar is going to be it, and I'm going to give him a little bit more money just to make sure he signs so I don't have to sit here for six and a half days. Uh, so he's in as the forward. We need a defensive or a generalist, and this is just going to come down to who has the best teaching. And you do as the generalist. Which means the assistant uh, will be looking at a defensive assistant. And that is either going to be Hue, Parento, Pole. Oh boy. We'll look at teaching because we're going to need a goalie uh, option here too. So, who is the best one for defensive in terms of teaching? And the answer is either Parento, Walser, Hue. Let's go for you, Antoine Parento. And then again, uh, goalie, like I said, I'm not afraid to just send out a little bit more money because uh, I don't want to be here for six and a half years. <laughs> so there we go. That should be good, and we should be good now to essentially hit the end of this episode where I want to be able to sim ahead to the beginning of the season and kind of show you guys what options we have for the roster as every single coach signs. So yeah, now we can skip ahead, and we'll be going to the beginning of the season, or at least the preseason, and we'll take a look at the overalls, what kind of development we've seen, and who really has a shout to make the roster. And then heading into the next episode, I'll make sure uh, that this team is set up and good to go for the season in terms of the best chemistry and everything like that. So... You've seen the whole process in terms of who was signed, why our, you know, our staff is the way it is. We have that champion's tag. The question now is what happens from here. So it's Wallstead and Kemper is the one, too. Beautiful. So even if we do go with auto-rotate, we're fine. As Riddick will be called up, Alnefelt, Dopita, and Bouchard will be the AHL combo. Um, I don't recall trading Bednar. So either... I accidentally added Bednar, or the game like auto-cut Jan Bednar for me. Interesting. Let me check that really quickly. Did I accidentally add Bednar to a deal? I mean, obviously we know we traded Shogard. Did I accidentally add Jan Bednar to the deal? It's not the biggest situation in the world. Like, young player with a good overall, but a man potential. He's never going to be our starting goalie. What happened to Jan Bednar? Um, Jan Bednar has dis fucking peered from this save. No, he hasn't. There he is. Yeah, so he has no team. Do I still have his rights? Wow, that's weird. It just made him fucking disappear off of my team. It says he's under contract. If I go to my contracts, does he show up here? Did it take away Jan Bednar's contract with me? <laughs> Goalies. Unsigned. So yeah, Jan Bednar just disappeared. He literally blipped out of existence. So uh, that's interesting, and that's why I was able to sign Tyler Johnson and uh, Justin Braun at the same time. So yeah, that's, you know, that's something to keep an eye on, I guess. We're still going to call up Riddick when I get the chance. All Velt and DePita will be the AHL 1-2. Defensively, it is. Well, actually, in fairness, I could just have Riddick rot. It doesn't make much of a difference to me. He could be healthy scratched. We'll see what happens. I mean, since I don't have 3-3 three three now, like I normally like doing in case of injury, yeah, we're going to have to figure something out. 
Defensively, it is Brandstrom, Shabbat, Theodore, Bernard, Docker, Poirier up to an 82. From there, oh man, Datsuk, Goliev, Tyconic. It's literally just a question of who fits the best with Poirier. Hopefully Poirier fits that third pairing. Not amazingly, but he can do well enough. So one of those, you know, two younger players or Johnny Tyconic will be uh, making the team. And then forward-wise, it's Kachuk Hall. Kachuk, Heischer, Pinto, Ovechkin. I mean, right now, Ovechkin, Malkin, Johnson can basically immediately be sent down. Because I want to see what this team looks like without them. It's 11-12, so Hornquist will be sent down. So we're looking at... Balsers, Koivula, Rensfeld, and Kahesnikov, who all deserve a shot. So, as expected, there are a lot of young players who have a very good shout at making this team. This defense core right here will be cut down to six, uh, likely with Justin Braun as the healthy scratch. And then forward-wise, we have 10-11 here that I want to give a shot to. But the question is whether or not Balsers, Koivula, or Rensfeld, perhaps even Kahesnikov, can make that push to be an NHLer this season. Give them a chance, have this trio of veterans here just in case, and then see what happens from there. So I really do like where our team is right now, uh, despite the curious case of the disappearing Bednar, which really doesn't help. But all in all, the Sens set up extremely well, in my opinion, uh, not only for this season, but for seasons in the future. So with that, I thank you very much if you made it to the end of this one. Again, not everyone's cup of tea for this type of episode, but hey, if you're still here, it was your cup of tea. For that, I thank you for it. Again, let me know suggestions down in the comments for certain scenarios that we could be facing in this next season. It's going to be another two. We'll see how that works out for us. Our head coach was fired last year. Still made it to the conference final, but we've seen. Eugene gets his hands on this team, and anything can happen.